Welcome to the Career Brand Story Podcast, where we talk about your career, your brand, and your story. I'm Jeremy Tudor, career strategist, brand marketer, and storyteller that created the Career Brand Story method that has helped thousands of job seekers craft their career brand story for today's job market and land their dream job. Hey, Jeb, how's things going for you? Pretty well. It's going pretty well, right? We're doing okay. Yes. Yeah. You going fishing tomorrow morning? I am going fishing tomorrow morning with uh, with what Matt Mary you? from that. What episode was that? We talked about it last episode. Matt's oh. getting a lot of airtime yeah. on the podcast lately. I think we're going to have to <laughs> charge him mean, an advertising fee. It must mean that he needs to come back on the podcast. Oh, that's a good point. We'll have to reschedule him. Mm-hmm. Yes. I think if a guest continues to come up, that must be the universe saying that they need to come back on. He recently had a job promotion too. Yeah, he I did. I saw that on LinkedIn. Yeah, he's a uh, like so marketing director. So maybe there's reasons. Something like that. He's just going places, you know? Oh, fancy pants Matt. That's uh, well, what they call him. Well, we just... <laughs> fancy pants Matt. <laughs> yeah, well, you have to ask him. You have to tell him. We talked all about him on this podcast and the last podcast. <laughs> yeah. He'll appreciate that, I'm sure. <laughs> We're just changing the name of the podcast to Matt's Podcast. Um, so what time do you have to get up to go fishing? I think we're getting up at about five and heading out. Mm. We're, uh, excuse, pardon my French, but we're going crappy fishing. Um, that's a fun name for a fish, right? Is that a real name? It is a real name. (laughs) It's called a crappy. Yeah. Uh, some people try to say crappie so that they don't have to say crappy, but it's crappy fishing. Yeah. Do people eat crappy fish? (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> Depends on the restaurant. <laughs> <Ba-dum>. Oh. <laughs> yes, people do. Um, do you know what lake you're going to? We usually goes to Lake Harris. Right. We're going to Jordan. Jordan Lake this time. Yep. Oh, that makes sense. There's probably a lot of crappy fish in Lake Jordan. <laughs> 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 oh man, that's great. Well, I hope you have fun. Well, listen, this episode is a water cooler day. Um, so we're just going to talk about some of the hot goss topics that we've decided are hot goss. They're not really hot goss, but I thought we should talk about Labor Day because that's happening. So hopefully we've published this in the right time frame that people will catch this on Labor Day. I uh, want to talk a little bit about talent mobility, what that actually looks like and means in the job market today, and a little bit about our Career Brand Story online community that's happening over on Patreon. That sounds great. Jeremy, um, your setup yeah. looks different today. And why Why would it that be? It is different. Um, well, number one, um, I, you know, we moved to Nashville. Was that last weekend or the weekend before? In, yeah, I think it was the weekend before. Man. I think you've been there for flies, two weeks doesn't now. It? Yeah. But you're in Nashville. Yeah. We are officially in Nashville, Tennessee. So that's pretty cool. Um, and we're still unboxing. And so all the podcast stuff is in a big box and there's not really a place yet for, I haven't, I haven't figured that out yet. Let's put it that way. So yeah. this is just a, if you really could see the setup, it's like it's my computer is on a box. And, uh, so, um, but I do get very good lighting here. Um, it, it does look great. Probably some of the best, some of the best lighting ever. Yeah. And it's all natural. Um, which is really nice. So yeah, yeah, we've kind of had a little bit of a rough start here. Um, my youngest daughter, she got COVID like the first day we moved here to Nashville. Uh, so we had to like, you know, figure out, we actually take her to the ER. Um, she's doing great now, but, um, then we had to get my other daughter tested, get both of the kids vaccinated. So listen, uh, you know, I look, I know people have hesitancy around vaccinations, but, I don't get reasons why, to be quite honestly, um, unless you have some health reason um, that the doctor has really let you know. I get that part. But if you are just a normal person, go get vaccinated. Um, you know, it's it. the COVID thing is real. I've had it. I've seen my daughter have it. And I don't want anyone I know getting it. So um, it just makes a lot of sense um, for you to, to go do that. Um, and uh, so... Anyway, I can support I guess we'll, that. We'll get, 
yeah, it just makes a lot of sense. So, yeah, so it's been good um, overall, and we really like where we live in. And, uh, yeah, so that's this is the setup. So, Well, it looks good. Yeah. I like that you're holding the microphone like you're uh, reporting live from somewhere. We should get you a, <laughs> a mic card that says, like, career brand story number one or something like that, channel one. Oh, like that goes on the front of it? Yeah. It could just say CBS. Yeah, they're called. Oh, it could say CBS. Gosh, we yeah. gotta be careful with that. But yeah, that would be fun. I know, right? I think those are called uh, flags. I think they're called microphone flags. I don't know. I've got a little change uh, yeah. in my setup. Look, at, I've got a new microphone. Okay, so I noticed that actually on one of our other business calls yeah. um, the other week, I was like, oh, someone upgraded their microphone. I did upgrade And my I meant microphone. to ask you about it. Yeah, you got the Sure, what is it? This is uh, the MV7. It's not the SM7B, which is a very popular broadcast microphone. But uh, I think this microphone sounds pretty darn good for podcasting. And um, so I got this because my wife and I, uh, it's weird to say my wife when you know her, but the audience doesn't know her. Yes. So anyway, my wife Jessica and I are starting a podcast together. And, um, it's also going to be a video podcast and I wanted us like to have like the same equipment and I got her this same microphone as a gift for starting the podcast. And so, uh, I got this. So anyway, this is the first podcast we're doing with it. I'm going to see what it sounds like, you know, if it's, if it's sonically much different than the other one, we'll see. I don't know. That's really cool. What's the pod? Can I ask what the podcast is going to be about, or is that still under wraps? Um, yeah, when it's actually ready, I'll I'll have the quick pitch line to say exactly what the podcast is about. But we're we're working through it. Well, we'll have to have her on this podcast too. That'd be great. You know, a little yeah. cross advertising. You know, yeah. So that would be fun. Yes, this might be the official it. start of the network. Anyways, well, happy Labor Day to everybody. Yay. Um, Chances are that most people know that Labor Day has something to do with working just because of the name Labor Day. Um, My parents growing up, and I think, Jeb, I've shared this story. I think you've heard this story. Mm -hmm. I know where this is going. Yeah, but when I was a kid, um, my parents were the only parents that I know of that actually made us work on Labor Day. So um, one Labor Day in Indiana, uh, there was just a bunch of projects, house projects, and my house project was that I had to paint the fence around our property. And my friend kept coming and like, when can you play? It's Labor Day. We're out of school. (laughs) When can you play? I was like, I can't play until I finish painting the fence. And I will never forget that experience. So... And yeah. so, and so neither will we, because we, we're going to hear this story every Labor Day <laughs> for the rest of our lives. That's right. <laughs> it, as we get older and our kids gather around with their kids, they'll be like, oh, uh, Gramps over there wants to tell his Labor Day story. Here it comes. <laughs> and I'll be like, back in my day, I had to paint a fence. In the snow. Um, it actually is a pretty funny story when you think of it that way, because, you know, your parents always have that one thing. And I really do have that one thing. I I don't, I'll never forget that. Um, It wasn't a good experience. (laughs) It doesn't sound like it. Nobody wants to paint fences. Yeah. There was no life lesson for me out of it. (laughs) (laughs) I was just happy when I was done. I I can even remember the color of paint. It was a maroon fence. Oh, oh, well now that is new information. All these years that I've heard this story, I've always just assumed it was a white fence. Nope. It was a maroon colored fence. And then um, there was also, so there was this outer fence that was chain linked. So you just had like one board and a post. Yeah. Um, So that wasn't too bad. But then there was this other section. We had like this like cement slab and on the cement slab, what sat there was one of those um, three, um, wheeled cars that it was just the frame mm. you know it has like two wheels in the front and yeah. one in the back yeah and my dad was going to like build that out he never did um 
And then the canoe sat on top of that. Well, actually, no wood for our fireplace sat all back there on top of this frame card. And then the canoe sat on top of it. That's what was stored on the cement slab. <laughs> and there was one of those privacy fence L shape that went around it. Yeah. And it was those privacy fence where, you know how you have like, you got like a board on one side and then a board on the other side. Yeah. Board it's on like the alternating. Side. Yeah. Yeah. With space and in I the middle. Paint yeah. That, and it's a pain in the butt to paint. Yeah. That's awful. It was the worst. Tim, Janetta, yeah. what did Jeremy do to you? Uh, what did know, he do for I've this punishment? But I've not let it go, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> so that was my, that's my, my memory of Labor Day. And, you know, the funny thing is, it's probably the only Labor Day we actually worked. I, I can't remember any other Labor Days where we did that. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's what we did. What's your memories of Labor Day? Um... <clears throat> going out on the boat, going to the beach, living it up, partying. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Labor Day actually has a violent history um, going all the way back to the 19th century. Um, there was actually terrible work conditions that were birthed from the labor movement. It led to this like massive strike um, that led Congress to declare the first Monday in September as a legal holiday. Um, and so that's the events around surrounding Labor Day contribute to like one of the most turbulent times in American history. Um, people were working like 12 to 16 hour work days, seven days a week, and often in like unsafe and unsanit unsanitary like circumstances. And I actually think like this Labor Day and our time of history is really interesting to consider with all the changes in the workforce that have been happening because of the pandemic. Um, you know, because when I was reading through this, I was like, well, we actually still have an issue with 12 to 16 hour work Yeah, days. we really do. There's a, um, a big issue going on in the film industry right now with between some union note uh, negotiations where, you know, a lot of people in the film industry are working these insane hours with little break. And, um, you know, people are sharing their stories about how they had to sleep in their car outside of the set because traffic was too bad it takes too long to get back to set so they're sleeping in their cars they're driving home like one person said they were driving in the middle lane because they knew when they fell asleep on their drive home in the middle of the night after this crazy long shift that by driving in the middle lane they'd have a buffer on each side to hopefully wake up before they crashed yeah that's crazy insane yeah. conditions <clears throat> Yeah, well, and you think about um, there's the the whole question around minimum wage, you know, kind of a universal base income, um, you know, like uh, I, I think it's NBC that keeps putting it out like this is the average budget of a 25 year old and it's the most insane and stupid thing you could ever look at, um, you know, that people who are just out here working minimum wage actually in no way can afford what the rent price really is. Um, so there's a lot of issues like that going on. Then there's just the, um, addiction of like being a high achiever, high producer, you know, um, where I think it's changed from maybe manufacturing in that space, but it's changed to creators where like, we're like killing ourselves to create content to be consumed by consumers. Yeah. Um, you know, and then we have the whole idea of like work from home and the benefits that people have experienced from that. And, you know, companies trying to force you to come back to work and they're saying, no, we're not going to do this. Uh, Google recently came out and said, OK, that's fine. Uh, you don't come back to work um, in the physical location. But now we're also going to um, probably reduce your pay, you know, um, because. Yeah, I mean, so it, it just kind of goes on and on. And there is a big shift that is happening in the workforce um, because the workforce is saying enough is enough. Um, and so, yeah, I just felt like kind of focusing a little bit on why the original Labor Day is here. Uh, it certainly should give us pause this year to think about where we are with our jobs. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 
So here's some fun facts. I don't know about fun facts. These are just facts. Yeah, I was going to say, I hope there's some fun because <laughs> this has been gloomy. I know. Well, <laughs> Labor Day is kind of a gloomy. It is. It's a gloomy holiday. Yeah. So here's the facts around it. So September 5th, 1882, uh, about 10,000 New York Union members gave up a day's pay uh, to march together from City Hall to Union Square. It was the first parade supporting workers in American history. Wow. And let it be known, it was on my birthday. Oh, September 5th is your birthday? September 5th is my birthday. I should know that, but 1882. I don't 1882. I'm a really actually. old guy. Wow. You are super <laughs> old. But you're looking good. Oh, thanks. What are you using your skin? That's what the, everyone wants to know. Yeah. Well, it's a, it's a secret, and uh, I can let wow. everyone know for a fee. Convince me. Right. I think it's funny that they say that this was the first parade, um, because it doesn't. Parades always seem to me like they would be fun. So maybe I don't know the real definition of the word parade, but <laughs> yeah, it's that like, doesn't seem like a fun parade. <laughs> no, because if you also think about like, um, you know, like armies are parading when they're marching through right. and stuff so but maybe in 1882 maybe they did it pretty enthusiastically i don't know yeah you know? i'm sure there was fun to be had in it depending on yeah you know how I don't much know you if like there's chaos any, like pictures of, of it or did they have the ability to do video at that point in 1882, in 1882? no i don't believe that the motion picture had had come around yet i may be wrong yeah so but I don't think so. Anyway, so that, that's one thing. Oregon, the state of Oregon, um, actually created a holiday around it, February 21st, 1887. Ooh. And by the end of the year, New York followed suit along with Colorado, Massachusetts, Massa, Massachusetts, Massachusetts. Right? Massa, Massachusetts, and New Jersey. And then in 1894, 23 more states had established Labor Day holiday. And then uh, in May of, of 1894, there was another strike by employees of the Pullman Palace Car Company. Um, there was actually deadly violence related to that. And President Cleveland, like whoever thinks of President Cleveland, <laughs> I certainly don't. Not on the top of my list of uh, people to think about, no. really. But President Cleveland suggested making Labor Day a national holiday. So you got to give these people props. Yeah. Um, because today, all we get is a pizza party. You know, thanks for working hard. Here's the pizza. Yeah. Oh, what was that thing I saw going? Oh, never mind. I've, I'm not going to share that because I just remembered what it was associated with. But it was like this sad thing of like, in appreciation for our employees, um, we have a banana in the break room. Like that was the yeah. snack that they were providing for employees. That is so nice. And these people stuck to their guns and got a national holiday. That's kind of impressive. Yeah, I'm grateful for it. So on June 28th, 1894, as a way of mending fences with workers, President Cleveland signed the act, and the first Monday in September is now Labor Day. So that's how Labor Day came about. Which has been great for my Not birthday actually, weekend growing up. Oh, that totally makes sense. Yeah. My birthday is, is usually probably somewhere around Labor Day. Did you think all the parades when you were young were like for you and your birthday? Uh, unfortunately, no. I don't recall there being Labor Day parades when I was young. Are there any Labor Day parades? I don't know of Labor Day parades either. Probably. I mean, there was that original because... one when I was born in 1882, but right. that's the last yes. one I recall. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, that was a good one. And mm -hmm. they were like, that's it. We're not doing any more Labor Day parades after that's this it. one. Yeah. Well, also, there's the rule of never wearing white after Labor Day. Archaic. Yeah. You wear white when you want to wear white. That's why I'm wearing white today. I'm always wearing black. But that's just oh, me. but it's not actually after Labor Day, so I can still yeah, wear white for still... like two more days. But you know, but the whole reason was that the, wealthy Americans would vacation outside the city during the summer months, so that was probably why it was started. 
so what is that? But it sounds like a very what does that privileged do thing. White? I don't know. That's just what I read and what I researched. I don't know. <laughs> so after, I don't know. I guess maybe because the wealthy Americans were trying to sympathize with the poor laboring Americans. I don't know. Yeah, we'll need. To, I don't know. We'll need to get in touch with the staff uh, etiquette fashion historian about this but that's when it started so it, there's something there there's something deep and sinister <laughs> going on about that <laughs> wonderful <laughs> now on a fun note for labor day national hot dog and sausage council which i did not know there was a national hot dog and sausage council but now that i know this i'm very excited and i support the national hot dog and sausage council mm-hmm they call the time from Memorial Day, so that happens in May. Yeah, that's, to that's Labor the Day. summer kickoff. Yep, it's peak hot dog season. Everybody loves peak hot dog season. Yeah, it kind of makes me want to have a hot dog. Right <laughs> I'd go for it. You know, and I've told you, like, one of my dream jobs, right? I have a lot of different dream jobs, but one of them is running a hot dog stand. Yeah, I think, I you think should that's do exciting. It. I mean, it's just fun. You know, it's it's minimal work, to be honest. Well, you know what? I better not say that because there's probably a hot dog stand yeah. out there that's like, what are you talking You're about? You're going to get some hate mail. <laughs> uh, okay, but it just feels like it's, I don't want to say it's an easy job, but it feels like, it, it, it doesn't feel like it takes you're, uh, a you're lot. You're giving the people what they want. Yeah, like... Who's going to hate you for a hot dog? You yeah. Know? It's, I mean. And you're just out there outside with the people. You can talk. You'd be like, hey, what do you want in your hot dog? You know? Yeah. What can I, I get know. for it you? just, yeah. You want just, the mustard? I give you the mustard. I've actually run a hot dog stand a couple of times in my life. Really? I really enjoyed it. I didn't know. Yeah. That. Yep. When I was a kid, um, I think we did some church fundraiser and we did a hot dog stand in back of a hardware store. Lots of fun. And there was one other time in my life where I did hot dogs. And I've just, I, I really like the work. I like the setup. I like preparing the hot dogs. I don't know. It just is a lot of fun. So we're finding what's so, going to help you thrive in your life and do what you love is a shiny hot dog cart on a corner somewhere. Yeah. So maybe, maybe I'll open that up somewhere here in Nashville. All right. Should we just go ahead and shut the podcast down? Just get started on I it. I think so. <laughs> it's over. Well, we can start a hot dog podcast. Oh, I don't even know if that exists, but that could be a really interesting podcast. <laughs> it, would, it could be. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So between the two holidays, do you know how many? Don't look at the script because it's in there. Don't look at the script, Jeb. It's too late. All right. I've already been looking at do it. Do you already know? Oh, do you already know? Did yeah, you see the I'll number? pretend that I don't know. Okay. So okay. ask me pretend the question. You didn't look at the script. You didn't see the number. How many hot dogs do you think Americans eat between Memorial Day and Labor Day? 23 hot dogs. Just 23 hot dogs. That's mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. That is the most ridiculous answer. Well, it's because I know the real given. answer. I know, but I mean, that was just so ridiculous. That was crazy. <laughs> All right. It's 7 billion hot dogs. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> 7 billion hot dogs. That's 818 wieners every second. That's insane. I can never get my head around those type of stats because I immediately think about the fact that like there's literally a hot dog being consumed right now every second. Like that just does not, I can't fathom that. That's crazy. That is <laughs> <it's> ridiculous. <laughs> like right now, while we're doing this podcast, every second that is going by in this podcast, someone is eating a hot dog. <laughs> that just doesn't even make sense. That is stupid. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Uh, but I mean, I okay. can't blame him. I want a hot dog. Okay, let me get let me let me ask you this. How many hot dogs? What's the most hot dogs you've eaten in one setting? Oh, this is embarrassing. Oh, 
Oh, wait. You've done a hot dog contest, haven't you? I have not done a hot dog contest, but oh, okay. um, I was once at a, a cookout and the grill master had made all these hot dogs and the kids like didn't eat them. And you know me, I can't let food go to waste. And so I just kept eating hot dogs. And I got to the point where um, I was like, well, we're out of buns, but there's still a ton of hot dogs. And I just kept eating them. And I think that that day I ate over 12. That's a lot of hot dogs. It was a lot of hot dogs. I think. It's a lot of sodium. I think the most. (laughs) Yeah, I think the most I've eaten is maybe four in one setting. Yeah, I I ate a ton of hot dogs that day. I vividly remember it. It was it was really wonderful. I never felt sick. Um but you know, I recognized that it was a poor decision to make. <laughs> but it was really good. Well, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> was it? I mean, it was just a decision. I don't know that it was poor. I don't it was think just a decision. I don't think that we can recommend that it's a good decision to eat 12 hot dogs at a sitting. Yeah, but you've been like living since like 18 Oh, 1882. You know, 80, 1882. That's so true. Maybe that's your secret. Maybe so. Nitrates, get them. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's a lot of wieners is all I'm going to say. A lot of wieners. So, anyways, happy Labor Day to everybody. Enjoy your hot dogs and maybe it's a good day to pause and think about where you are in your career journey, where you are today and where you're trying to go tomorrow. And if you're getting stuck on that, we can help with you. Um, that was the, maybe the worst segue in the history of broadcast. <laughs> <laughs> it really Enjoy was. your well, hot dog. Is- if you need help with your uh, career moves, hit us up. But... So maybe that's what the hot dog stand is. It's a hot dog stand that helps people with their careers. <laughs> I don't know. Come down, have a hot dog with me. I gave you a can soda and we're going to sit and talk about where you're going in your life. I like it. You know, it could work. That's all I'm saying. Um, make a good show. <laughs> this is pretty bad. Yeah. This is why this is a water cooler podcast conversation today. Yeah. Just want to remind everybody, these are the kind of conversations you would have around the water cooler. At least around our water cooler. Yeah. And right now, the management's like, you guys have been standing around that water cooler a long time. We're not paying you to talk about hot dogs. Let's get back to work. And if you and I were actually in working proximity, we probably would be like, all right, let's take a break and go get some hot dogs. Oh, we'd absolutely do that. Yeah. Yeah. That would be great. So um, one more last thing on hot dogs before we jump off this. See, we could really do a podcast on hot dogs. <laughs> sure we could. <laughs> Where do you think is the best place right now for you to go get a hot dog? Oh, that is a very interesting question because I have always been. Um, gosh, I just like so many different kinds of food in different ways. Like I have a serious affinity for the gas station hot dog, the like two for a dollar Mm. crusty old hot dog. That's been on the roller grill for a day. But then I also really like, you know, like the Sabret um, corner stand hot dogs that are just like juicy and good. And, you know, made by some Italian dude. I, I can't pick a favorite. But, I mean, I think hot dogs from a hot dog stand cart are the best. They are very good. There is something really special about those. But then, you know, at the same but time, you, I really love the burned up ones on, from, from the grill on the weekend, you know? I love a burned hot dog. Yeah, I mean, I'm not a fan of a burned hot dog. I understand that people like that. Like, my wife, Christy, loves stuff to be kind of charred. Mm-hmm. Like that burnt taste. Yeah. Um, so... I know that about you guys, both of you. Um, man, oh, cooking a hot dog over a bonfire is pretty good, too. Oh, that is good. Yeah, there is no yeah. best hot dog. All hot dogs are best hot dogs. Except for the I've red ones. Dogs. That's controversial here in North Carolina. Because oh, they're all about... Like the red hot And dogs. I'm not talking about red hots. I'm talking about these red hot dogs that 
Everybody yeah, thinks they're about. great here in North Carolina. And they're I, disgusting. They're gross. I don't get it. Those are the most. Those are the most disgusting hot dogs you could ever eat. Hundred <laughs> percent agree. <laughs> Um, I've had hot dogs from cookout. I'm not a fan, but I still order them. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've also had hot dogs from five guys. That's an interesting experience. Oh, that's interesting. It's a pretty big hot dog. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever had a hot dog from there? No. I, uh, I love yeah, their burgers an, too much to do that. You should, you should try it sometime. Just give it a try. All right. Well, I've got a lunch meeting at, coming up here in a, in a little while. Maybe we'll go to five guys. Well, I'd, I'd love to hear your opinion on that. So, um, also, um, in Cincinnati, they have, um, you know, Skyline Chili and they have the Coney Dogs. Mm-hmm. I like the Coney Those are really dog. good. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, way too much time yep. on hot dogs. I think we've talked too much hot dogs. Let's get on to the, to the next <laughs> topic. Go and enjoy your hot dogs. All right. So... My whole point of bringing Labor Day up was really, <laughs> <laughs> it was interesting to me, the history of it. And then again, where we are today, um, you know, thinking about all the different changes that are happening culturally around work. Um, according to Microsoft's 2021 Work Trend Index, um, 41% of people are likely to consider leaving their jobs within the next year. Um, that's a very high number. Um, and so you may have heard it dubbed as the Great Resignation. Um, is how it's being kind of described. And every employer is going to be impacted by this reset. Um, Finding people is hard enough, but your absolute top priority has to be around safeguarding and retaining your existing high performers right now. And so um, what we're really talking about is talent mobility. Talent mobility encompasses the organization's ability to quickly understand the skills, the experiences, and the career interests of your employees. And the overarching goal of this is to move employees into new roles internally where existing skills can be sharpened, uh, new skills can be developed and position the right leaders in an effective succession plan when needed. So again, 42% of workers looking for a new job, that's a lot of jobs. Um, we've got the highest number of like job openings right now, um, than we've had in a very long time. Um, 80% of workers are concerned about their career growth. 72% of workers are rethinking their skill sets. And so, um, a talent mobility strategy, when you think about a hire, most organizations risk about 4,000 cost per hire. Um, so if someone walks out the door, there's $4,000 that goes out the door because there's loss in training, knowledge, professional development. And that's not even to speak if they were a high performer, what type of leadership and culture costs you're actually losing could be much higher. That's so actually less than I having, thought it would be. Yeah, I would say that's like the initial like onboarding kind of cost. And mm-hmm. then depending on their tenure, depending on their level of leadership, like that cost can dramatically go a lot higher. Yeah. But it's still a cost, you know, that, you know, if you have one in four employees, you know, that can add up really fast. Mm -hmm. And so a talent mobility strategy really helps you identify, okay, where is my current internal workforce? What are they thinking? What are they feeling? Um, You know, what are their skills today and how can we really help them kind of get to the next level? And I think a lot of companies struggle with that career pathing, Um, And sometimes, you know, the person who is, you know, um, thinking about leaving, the truth is, is like three seats down or, you know, a different type of role within the company that is really needed may actually be the better fit for them um, and might engage them more. And you could actually get them to move, but they don't advocate for it. The company doesn't advocate for it and they end up hiring externally costing more money and never really making these shifts that could continue to build, you know, a really great company. So, you know, with multiple talent shifts on the horizon, businesses risk loss in resources and increase in talent acquisition costs if they choose to forgo any type of talent mobility strategy. Um, And you may say, okay, well, why are you bringing all of that up? Well, the reason is at Career Brand Story, we are actually 
for the first time, pushing out into this space business to business and helping businesses be able to put together a talent mobility strategy. And we leverage our talent insight assessments so we can actually give you talent, real time talent data analytics that really help you understand exactly where your workforce is, what they're thinking, what they're feeling, what their skill sets are. Um, does it benchmark up to the roles and the jobs that you have? And how do you move people and get them into those places? The other thing that happens a lot of times is that companies who may even promote like internal opportunities, when people apply internally, but don't get selected, they're four times more likely to walk out the door. And so instead of having that person walk out the door by having them go through a talent insight assessment and process, you can actually sit down with them individually and give them real data of like, here's why you know, we didn't select you for this role because you need to develop these skill sets and you need this professional development. And here's an actual professional development plan to get you there. And so you can re-engage that talent without losing them and helping them have a full understanding of like, okay, why not me? So we're really excited about this. I'm gonna be talking more about it. You'll probably see me talking more about it across social media and, and advertising more about what our services are there. But we are now engaged with um, one of our first companies um, that we're working with um, in um, Louisville, Kentucky um, and helping them through this process right now. Yeah, that's, that's really fantastic that you're able to do that. Yeah, I'm really excited about it. Um, I think that, um, you know, it's a lot of fun because you get to go in, learn a lot about how different organizations work and think and do things and learn about a lot of different types of jobs that are there. And, uh, but, you know, and really help companies like with their, their employee retention. And, you know, I think, you know, that's always been our mission statement. I know a lot of people think, well, gosh, that's just such a, a that, how is that a mission statement? But our mission statement really is helping people thrive in their life and do more of what they love. And this is impacting, you know, organizations um, to get people around that, you know. And, you know, so many times you go into places and, and the surveys show 82% percent of people like are dissatisfied in their job. So the fact that we as a company could go into a company and help impact and change that um, is pretty exciting. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, um, so we're doing that and uh, throwing hot dog parties along the way. Yeah. And you know, we really missed an opportunity here to talk about hot dogs plus mobility is the Oscar Mayer Wiener mobile. Oh my gosh. That would be, that would be a dream to drive that thing. <laughs> <laughs> if someone could arrange that for like a birthday for me, I would totally flip. Oh, that'd be so cool. Yeah, that would be pretty awesome. Hey, um, and then we could get the whole career brand story community at a live event. <laughs> me driving the Oscar Mayer Wiener car and having a hot dog party with everybody. But until that happens, everybody could join us on the career brand story community online at Patreon. That sounds more feasible. So yes. So until we can do that, uh, you should think about joining us there. Um, we've got a small crowd that has currently joined us. Um, it's a lot of fun. Um, in fact, Jeb, you were on our live Q and a last week cause we were talking about video interviewing. Yeah our video resumes and our, our, our virtual story um, videos that we do for our clients. So every week I do a live Q and A. Um, we're answering all of your questions around career strategy, brand marketing, personal branding, everything else in between. Um, members of the career brand story community also receive exclusive biweekly bonus content that you're not going to find anywhere else. And we're really excited to foster a community over there that allows all of our members to, again, thrive in their life and do what they love. You can go and find that at careerbrandstory.com. And there's a couple of things over on that website um, that you can do. Um, one is there is a, a button there that you click and it'll take you over to the Patreon community and can join. It's $10 a month. Um, here's the cool thing. You get free updates on your resume. 
um, as long as you've done the story method with us and been a client. You also can credit up to $120 or 12 months worth of subscription towards any future services. So I was just talking to um, one of our clients um, uh, just yesterday, and he's really interested in doing the virtual story. Um, and he was like, so like I can credit like 120 after the 12 months towards that? And I was like, absolutely. So um, that's something he's thinking about. I think that's a great way um, benefit to be a part of this um, beyond just, you know, the things we're talking about and, you know, staying connected with one another. So go to careerbrandstory.com. You can do that there. The other thing you can do over at careerbrandstory.com, which we would absolutely love, is for you to uh, go to our YouTube channel um, and they can just click over there, right, Jeb? Yeah, that's right. Um, if you go to careerbrandstory.com, you're going to see a kind of grayish blue box that says subscribe on. And the third icon on that is the YouTube play button. So if you click on that YouTube play button, it's right next to the Spotify button. You're taken right to our channel on YouTube and you can click on the big red subscribe button and hit the notification bell as well if you uh, would like to be updated when we have a new podcast posted. Yeah, and so everything was originally posted at Jeremy Tudor on that uh, YouTube channel, and that still exists, um, but we're not actively putting anything on that right now. That's going to take a different um, shape in the future. Yeah. Uh, at the moment, it sounds like it's going to be all about hot dogs in the future. <laughs> Apparently. But, um but if so, if you were subscribed over there, go go over to Career Brand Story and subscribe to that one, so that you get all the latest podcasts um, that are happening. So we would love for you to do that. That would be a big help to us and keep us all connected together. So yeah, and a, a part of the reason for this ask that we're doing on every podcast um, for trying to build the audience there, um, you know, it's easy to think that it's about let's build this big audience so we can get in on that YouTube. YouTuber advertising money, that would be wonderful, but that takes a lot of subscribers. What we're actually wanting to do is build, excuse me, build enough subscribers to the point that we can get our own uh, custom URL, which makes us easier to find and puts us higher in the algorithm so that we can get our content to more people so that we can help more people. Yeah, any, any more hot dogs, any advertising or anything like that is just like a happy side effect. Um, of of I growing if we could get a hot dog advertiser. I am positive we could. We've said hot dog however many times in this episode. You know, it's keyword rich. That's right. So, well, that's our water cooler conversations. We probably actually should go do some real work in our life. Well, listen, uh, you can find me on LinkedIn and Twitter. I'm not on Twitter. Why is that in the script? I don't know. You can find me on Twitter, but I don't know why that's in there. You're not that active is weird. on Twitter. I have no, you know, and I, I've never said that and I've never seen that written. And I just, I worked on the script this morning. That is weird. Well, you can find me on LinkedIn. You know what? I meant to type Facebook. It'll be all right. No answer. Don't overthink that. it. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, you can find me on LinkedIn and Facebook at Jeremy Tudor. And then you can find um, us on Instagram at career brand story. So that is a shift. Um, you will not find me at Jeremy T. Tudor anymore on Instagram. Look for Career Brand Story um, to follow us. And while many of you listen to this podcast, of course, you may stop after today because we talked about hot dogs for so long. But um, because that is what a podcast is for, you can also watch each episode on YouTube. Just search for uh, Career Brand Story or, again, go to careerbrandstory.com. You're going to find us, like us, subscribe to us, do all the fun things that you're supposed to do with that. We really, really would, would appreciate that. Jeb, where can everybody find you? Jebgraff.com, J-E-B-B-G-R-A-F-F.com. And everywhere else, my handle is at Jeb Graff. All right, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Happy Labor Day. Go eat some hot dogs and keep thriving. If you're interested in advertising your business on our podcast, we advertise for local and national companies. Contact McKay at careerbrandstory.com for more information. 
That's M-C-C-A-Y at careerbrandstory.com.